Welcome to Smash to Pieces, a casual walk through the history of the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate roster. My name is Joe. And my name is Matt. And if you're new here, what we're doing on this show is we are playing one game for every character in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate from 1984's Duck Hunt to 2017's Breath of the War. You okay? Oh, sh- shit. Sorry, I fell asleep because the game we're talking about today is so boring! So, today's game is allegedly representing Fighter number 30, released in 1993 for the Game Boy. It's Wario Land. So, this game sucks. I'm sure it was much better in the early 90s when it was first released, and portable games were a miracle. The fact that a, a portable game existed at all was a miracle at some point. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. But this wasn't one of those miracles. <laughs> well, <laughs> so this is technically the third Super Mario Land game. The second one being the one in which Wario was originally introduced as the antagonist. The full name of this game, if you didn't catch it last episode, is Wario Land colon Super Mario Land 3. And boy, it... So, like, we played Mario Land 1, and we enjoyed it. It's a good game. Mario Land 2 is well-loved. I have played it. It's very good. This game, I have never heard anybody talk about it. I've never seen it. I've never played it. And now that I've played it, I see why. <laughs> it's well, I, P. It's it's well regarded. Is is the thing? Is it? It is. Yeah, but like I I see like it's is well regarded at the time. It is well regarded in the nineties. No one really talks about it today because, again, it's like I said. Every portable game at the time was a miracle. The fact that they made a functional game that you can play from start to finish that runs on, like, what was it, a 4 megabyte cartridge, if that? That was a miracle. uh, Yeah, I could, yeah, I agree with that, but, like, so... But, it's not the early 90s anymore, and the sheer fact that the game exists isn't, isn't enough. Let me jump in front here and at least give two positive things about the game. One, it gave Wario one of his most iconic moves ever, being the shoulder charge. I assume he does not have that in in Mario 2, but I might be wrong. I've never played that. You have, though. I do not remember. It's been a long time. I'm going to assume the shoulder charge came from this game. And the other thing is I think it's fairly neat how it handles checkpoints being they are optional. And if you want a better bonus at the end of the game, then you ideally want to avoid checkpoints, but that adds a risk and reward factor, and I like that. I have now said the two positive things I can say about Wario. (laughs) Let let me add a third. Okay. I didn't notice this until someone uh, someone pointed out on Twitter. It was actually uh, someone from NWR with us. Uh, It was Guillaume. He does uh, the main, the the big NWR podcast, Radio Free Nintendo. He he said that one of the things that impressed him about the game was that uh, the levels actually change over the course of the game. Like remember that one that one world where you beat the one level and then like the world floods. If you go back to the old levels, they're flooded. Huh. Which that is for for a Game Boy game. Very cool. Very impressive. Did did a good job. Now, granted, why would my instinct be to go back to those levels? There are collectibles. There are treasures that you can that, get. That there there are there are reasons to go back and get uh, to go back to old levels. There's just no reason to care, in my opinion. What did you get at the end? What was your ending? Oh, I turned the game off as soon as the credits started. I didn't care. I didn't care. Yeah, but before the credits started, what did you get? Like, what house did Wario get? I didn't... It just kind of happened, dude. Like, I beat the genie, and I saw, like, the Peach statue show up, and it got taken and everything, and I was checked out. Yeah, what I was the fuck out. was that cutscene, by the way? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't either. Wario... 
Wario beats the genie, and then Mario just shows up and takes a statue of Peach? You never even fight Captain Syrup. You don't. You fight Captain Syrup. Well, you fight the genie while Captain Syrup is, like, sitting on his shoulder. Something like that. I I don't know. It's... uh... So the the problem with the game is that I'm sure at some point in your life, and this is something that I'm sure many people can relate to, I'm sure you have played... A licensed video game that isn't very good, and you know the type that's just—it's just a platformer. It's—it's not—it it doesn't have anything interesting besides the fact that it is a licensed game, and you're playing as this character you recognize. I'm sure you've played games exactly like that before, right? Yeah, that's what this game feels like. This game feels like a licensed game that exists just for the sake of existing. It feels like when I was playing the Sabrina the Teenage Witch animated series Game Boy game. It's not bad. It's just not particularly good. There's It doesn't fail in any particular regard. There's just nothing interesting. It's just a game that is here. I'm going to compare it to something that might make some people mad at me. And I don't think it's... I think that this thing I'm going to compare it to is at least one rung above Wario Land. But it kind of reminds me of how I feel about the new Super Mario Brothers series. Where, yeah, it's not bad. They're not bad. But, like, I'm bored when I play them. There's nothing there. I would say that the the new Super Mario Brothers series at least has really interesting level design. The level design in New Super Mario Brothers is solid. Now, granted, there is one there is one cool level in Wario Land, and it's the train level. I liked that level. Yeah, that was cool. It's the only level that's the only level I really like that sticks out in my mind, except for the the one level that both of us it's the exact same level that we both suddenly realized, oh, I don't like this game, which is it's basically an auto scroller where at a certain point you have to sit and wait for the auto scrolling part to come to you. Yep. It's it's a level it's like level th- 3 or something, maybe level 4. It's uh, I think it's the first level of the second world where there's a thwomp slowly chasing you or something that's supposed to be like a thwomp. I don't think it's exactly supposed to be a thwomp. I think it is a thwomp. You have to escape it. But then you have to ride it, and if you moved faster than it to get to the point where you have to ride it... You now have to wait for it. Yeah, you just sit there, and you wait for it now. I hope you I hope you enjoy that. Fun game, right? And it, it's just, the way Wario moves doesn't feel good. The way he, like, interacts with enemies doesn't feel good. Sometimes the rules for, do you knock down this enemy and pick them up, don't make a whole lot of sense. Like, those penguins... Those weird armored penguins that look like they belong in Tropical Freeze. Sometimes you would jump on them and they'd just like get stunned for a second and then get up and keep walking. And sometimes they'd just be stunned and Wario would pick them up immediately. And I don't understand what the rules were. It just, it, it, it did feel really inconsistent like how enemies were handled. And like, unlike Mario 1 or Mario Land 1 where I was like, man, the pixel art in this game is weirdly good or like myths and monsters where it's like holy shit that was pixel art on a game boy holy what the hell this has nothing it's ugly the, actually the genie sure isn't it sure isn't like orcos was boy he's not and also wario's sprite himself is just ugly to be fair his sprite was very ugly in mario land 2 i mean wario is an ugly dude but like this is going a bit far i've I, his his sprite in this game is very similar to War, uh, Mario Land 2, so I'm not going to fault this game for that. But, yeah, the art isn't particularly impressive, and Mario Land, while obviously still very primitive by today's standards, is shockingly good for a launch day Game Boy game. Yeah, this doesn't even have the benefit of being that. This game... This game came out... <laughs> this game came out... How many how many years? This is the third game in that very series. Mario Land came out in 89 and this game came out in 1993. And it still doesn't look as good. Like that's 4 years. <laughs> Come on. 
I just, I don't... I don't really have anything else to say about the game. Because that's, like, I've said... I do. It, let me let me go ahead and take this. Don't you worry. Let me take the reins. Uh, this this game actually spawned its own franchise, being Wario Land. Uh, starting with Wario Land 2, it changed genres completely. As far as I'm aware, 2, 3, and 4, all very well-loved games are Metroidvania games. Uh, and people really, really like those. 2 and 4 especially, I hear a lot about. Yeah, so I have I have seen someone mention that like as of Mario La- uh, Wario Land Two, which I guess would be Mario Land Four, uh, Wario is now invincible, and the the game design uh, was centered around okay, what challenges can we give to a character who's invincible, which sounds way more interesting. Yeah, I think so. That that's that's the one thing that I know about one of the Wario Lands at least. So if you're saying it's two, I believe you. It might be the others as well, but. I don't understand how. I guess this game was successful when it came out. That's good. But, like, the reviews I read for this game on Wikipedia, on the wiki article, a lot of them uh, later for Wario Land 2 would say, I know some people might be disappointed in the change in gameplay between this and Wario Land 1, but I think they'll be they'll be pleasantly surprised by how well it works and what fuck... Who, <laughs> Who's going to be disappointed? This. So in this game, the other thing that I want to say, because boy, boy, I love, I love this thing. And by love it, I mean, how did this make it past anybody? There are hats that you can pick up in this game, different hats, which I think is a neat mechanic. Are you about to talk about how the dragon hat's fucking garbage? I'm about to talk about how the dragon hat's a dick. The dragon hat looks like a dick. How did anybody look around, look at this thing and not say, hey, that's a dick. Can we like maybe put it on its side? That's a dick. That's uh, that's not what I was going to say. I, I had more uh, nuanced thoughts about the dragon hat. Well, the dragon hat does suck. It's the worst hat in the game, like by far, because the rabbit hat's the only one that's worth a shit. But well, so the dragon hat also takes away your shoulder charge, which I learned was was uh, not the best thing to do when I came across a platforming challenge that needed the shoulder charge. And also, if you're standing, if you're standing straight up, the dragon hat can't hit a majority of the enemies in the game. They're too short. <laughs> you can just crouch for that. That's fine. That's whatever. I didn't mind that. But that's still stupid. And like. So, the dragon head is bad. Uh, the bosses are all unique, and I think that's cool, because every single boss has its own gimmick, pretty much. The problem is, the gimmicks are not well communicated in a lot of ways. And sometimes, in the, in the case of the Minotaur boss, if you don't show up to that boss as Big Wario... You can't win that boss. You can't do anything to him. Remind me the the gameplay gimmick of that one. I don't remember their aesthetics at all. You have to shoulder charge him so that it stuns him, and then you pick him up and throw him off the platform, and that's how you beat him. If you are small Wario, you can't shoulder charge him. I actually don't even remember this boss at all. He's the second boss in the game. Is it like weirdly easy if you do have the if you are big warrior? Oh yeah, it, it takes like fucking ten seconds. That's probably why I don't remember it. But like, if you go in, if you end up going in as small Wario, fuck you, you don't get to do it. You don't get to play the game. You can't hurt him. And it's another one of those those moments. Like it's like kind of like Ganon. The complaint we had about Ganon in Link to the Past, and how like I would feel like the game was respecting my time more if it just straight up killed me the instant I walked in the room as small Wario, just Im- just immediately. Yeah, I can relate to that a lot. I mean, that's how I felt about Ganon too. I would respect the game more if it just killed me. <laughs> and like, I'd think it was bullshit at the time, but the fact that it's impossible when you are small Wario and the game still just lets you walk into the room and there's not even a hat outside of the door. Well, yeah, yeah. They don't well, even do it's that. Like, <laughs> it's the same way that I feel about Ganon is that it's not. It wouldn't be good if the game killed you at, right as you walked in the room, but it would be less bad. Yeah, that's that's pretty much where I stand on that too. Uh, and like, I think the biggest example for me 
for the gimmicks aren't well communicated, but at least this one had a really kind of clever design thing that kind of made it a little bit better is the fight with the genie, the final bat, the final boss. You're supposed to jump on his head. You can't get to his head. Fuck you. So you pick up the, so your first instinct is to pick up the lamp and try and throw it at his head. You can't hit his head with the lamp. So the game expects you to try again, maybe two more times, and then the lamp lets out a cloud, and you can step on the cloud and jump on the genie. And that's how you fight him. I found no consistency to, like, when the lamp would actually let the cloud up. Like, I know it was when the... the I know that it... I know that it was whenever it landed, like, properly facing upright, but that wasn't consistent. Yeah, that's... Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't need to be... It doesn't need to land upright to go up. It's just a random number of times you throw it. No, I think every time, every time that it, it was every time that it landed upright for me. But it did. There was no consistency to when it landed upright. Yeah, it's it's, and like even when it lands upright, sometimes it doesn't let out a cloud. I had that experience. I don't know. It wor- it, it it worked fine for me in that regard. Like it's just, the f- it. It's not. Good to have learning the gimmick of your boss fight be based on an entirely random mechanic that you have never seen up until that point. And maybe, maybe it's not random. Maybe it's just something that we, that we didn't pick up on, but neither of us picked up on it. The fact that it felt random should say enough. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it actually was. It matters, like, p- player perception is what matters. Because even if it isn't random, there's no way for me to play, ar- to, like, play around it if I can't figure it out. And if I'm able to beat the boss without even having an idea as to what's causing it, it might as well be random. Yeah, I... There's just... This game's not good. This game's not good. So, in in fairness, I just I you know I mentioned Guillaume. I just want to read what he said, partially because people do like this game, and you know I don't want to just be completely negative on it if if it's just our taste, and partially because he gave your anodyne review a shout out on RFN. So let's let's, let's return the favor a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he says. Um, he says that uh, this was in a Twitter thread after I, I just I just tweeted out I don't like Wario Land, and he's uh, he said that it's still his favorite uh, Wario game after Shake It. Wario uh, Shake It he considers his favorite, but he puts this one at number two. He liked the whole thing where the level would change uh, based on what was happening in the world because uh, that wasn't something you saw very often. And like that's that's neat. I'll give them that. That's very neat. And on the Game Boy, no less, that's extremely impressive. I still didn't enjoy the game. <laughs> and um, he he also pointed out that very few platformers at the time, in the early 90s, had uh, any sort of exploration in them. So even if you and me weren't really interested in that, in the year of our Lord 2019, uh, when he played it, when it was new, that was really impressive because it was something that games just weren't doing. So there is definitely an element here of we we are looking back on this in 2019 and judging it by those standards. By those standards, I will maintain it's still really not worth your time. Uh, you There are other games you could be playing instead of this one. But I'm not ready to say that it was bad in 1993. And look, I, I, get, I get that. I get, like, believing a game was good when it came out, but probably not great by today's standards. One of my favorite games of all time is fucking Donkey Kong 64. And boy, we'll have some words for that game when we get to it. <laughs> but, and that that game, I love that game. And that game was great when it came out. And when we go back and play it, it's probably not going to be great for anybody else that didn't play it as a child. Uh, so so I get that. But like, it's just... The the exploration thing is a very good point to bring up, but I think from the sound of it, they did a lot better job doing the exploration idea when it became a Metroidvania, which is a game series based around exploration, because when you're playing a like Game Boy platformer, exploration is not really an instinct you have. 
if that makes sense. I didn't ever even think to go back to other levels, half because I wasn't really having all that much fun in the levels I was in, but half because, like, why would I think to do that? That's not, you don't go do that in, like, Mario World, or I guess you do sometimes, but <laughs> with the with the Switches. Bad example. You don't go, you didn't go back to other levels in, like, Super Mario Land. I, I think part of the issue is that it didn't really communicate to us that there was anything that really changed. And if you're going back and trying 100%, get all the treasures, obviously you'll notice that. But at the same time, it's not something that we were interested in. And, like, again, as our friend Jesse likes to point out a lot when people uh, try to say, like, you didn't do everything there was to offer in the game, this is a, this show, the tagline is a casual walk. We are playing these games casually, and we're going to miss stuff like that, and that's fine, and I'm glad somebody pointed it out, because I do legitimately think that's a very neat aspect of the game, and I did not, I was not aware that it was there. Yeah, my, 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 my intention with the show is to understand more about the history of these characters, not just as characters, but also the games that they come from. But see, I don't, I don't feel like we got a lot of that out of out of this game for Wario. We got a shoulder charge, and that's it. Well, for well, for me, it's like uh, Wario Land is so heavily displaced by it, it by its sequels, and it's it's easy to see why. I think it's fair to say that uh, there were better choices we could have gone with. But before we before we get into that, because we are going to talk about that, don't you worry, listener. I do want to bring up, there's one good song in this whole game. That That's it. All the other songs <laughs> suck. This soundtrack's bad. Like, it's, it's not, not... like Again, it's not, like, actively bad. It's just, again, it's boring. There are certain parts that are actively bad. Uh, yeah, fair. But... but, like, yeah, for the most part, it's not so much that it's, oh, man, this hurts me to listen to. It's that I don't remember any of these songs because they're all boring. None of them are... Int- like, especially compared to Mario Land 1... Where that soundtrack is incredible? It just didn't make me care. But the one good song in this game, I will say, I like the boss theme a lot. song that sticks out in my mind is something I remember after playing the game. There's nothing else. I don't got anything else. (laughs) Like, let me put this in context. You played for 10 minutes on stream and realized this is stream poison. I can't be doing this on stream. (laughs) Like, I... The only way that I was able to finish it was last night we had a movie night, and it was a movie that I had already seen, so while watching the movie, and frankly paying more attention to the movie, I played Wario Land, and that's how I finished it. I do not think that I would have been able to sustain a full stream of just paying attention to that game. I played the whole thing. I don't think it was a fun stream to watch. Basically, nobody watched for the whole thing, and I don't blame anybody for that. It's all up on the YouTube channel if you really want to go see it, but you ain't you ain't missing much. <laughs> it was not a it was not a high energy fun stream. I did not have a good time. I'm sorry to anybody that does enjoy this game, but I got nothing else to say about it. I didn't like it. Yeah, pretty much. This this is and it's not even like I think I brought this up to you where I was like, I had, I feel like ice climber was a more like interesting game to play. And you pointed out that like, at least ice climber feels like they made a game with the best they had. It sucks, but that's just cause that's what video games were then. Yeah. Ice climber didn't make me feel like I was playing a licensed game. 
That's what I felt playing Wario Land. Like, I, I, I mean that genuinely. I, I, I got flashbacks to all the bad licensed platformers that I played as a kid. It felt the same. So, I don't want to keep throwing rocks at this game. So, here's what we're going to do. We've talked about this. We've talked this over. Wario deserves better than this. Than this 25 minutes of us just shitting all over the game we played for him. Because it's not, it's not like Kid Icarus or Ice Climber where those two games were our only choices. Wario deserves better. And it's, and this isn't just a mediocre game. It's also not representative of, of him, of his series. Of any of version any of the series. Yeah. Like, it's not representative of any version of the character that currently exists today. And, like, again, you could say the same about the original Kid Icarus and Pit, but, like, there aren't any other Kid Icarus games. There are the three that exist. Wario doesn't have that problem. There are four Wario Land, Wario Land games. There's a Wario Land game on Wii. There's a Wario World game. There's WarioWare. He's got so much. We can't just leave him and leave him in this. That's not fair. <laughs> no. So at a future date, um, obviously we're playing these games in release order, so we uh, we won't know exactly when until we've decided exactly what game we're playing. At a future date, we will be doing episode number fifteen, Epsilon, the Echo Fighter of of Wario Land, uh, where we are going to play a different game to represent Wario. And you get to pick what it is well, based on our choices. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring, I think we have three pretty good choices that we should, that we should bring to the thing. Uh, one of them from me, one of them from you, and one of them that's been suggested by a, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Luke. And I think voting between those three, th- much the same way we did when like Isabel was announced and we didn't know what to play though. This one, we can actually make a poll because I don't think it's just going to be like, everybody's going to say new leaf. Cause that's the one they'd want to play. And, and having three choices, I think would stop like a split vote, I guess, if that makes sense. I don't know. I, don't I think, think it would anything. cause a split vote. I, I know terms. <laughs> so here, here are the, the three options. Uh, we will each present them along with our arguments. I will let you go first. So my uh, choice would be Wario Land Shake It, which um, is notable in many ways. Um, It was a big return from the Wario Land series in general, which had not had uh, a new entry in a while, uh, if I'm correct. It is considered by many to be the best of the Wario Land games, and additionally, it is uh, unique in that it is a AAA developed uh, hand drawn art game released uh, in the Wii era, which you don't see many of those even today. Uh, it was a big, big return for hand drawn art, and that is that is really significant. Um, it's very highly regarded, and I am just personally more interested in playing uh a plat like a wario land game for this show because i feel like it it gives us more opportunity for you know things to talk about as well as is probably a better stream in my opinion so mine is warioware smooth moves which i believe is generally considered one of the better games in the warioware franchise and the reason general, that, generally the best is considered to be twisted, but twisted is literally unstreamable. Yeah, we could we like oh god, there's no way. <laughs> uh even there's no not even any equipment we'd be able to use to stream twisted. No, literally unstreamable. Uh, so, what are we gonna put in a, a a GameCube Game Boy player and tilt the whole GameCube at once? Hell yeah. That sounds fun <laughs> and safe and like it would work. <laughs> But Smooth Moves is my favorite WarioWare game. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to buy a Wii in the first place. Uh, Not the main reason, that was Brawl. But I really, really like WarioWare Smooth Moves. And I think overall, the WarioWare franchise in general is a much better representation of what Wario is today. Especially in Smash, 
where his stage comes from that franchise. Most of his special moves come from that franchise. His final smash comes from that franchise. Uh, what was the, the last thing? Pretty much all of the music comes from that franchise, which is kind of weird uh, and a shame. I'm not saying that is like a positive thing. That's branch out a little bit, Nintendo. Come on. <laughs> uh, and like his default costume is his WarioWare look. Not to mention, you say that Shake It would be a better stream. Boy, I disagree. Smooth Moves would be a hell of a stream. That being said... It is physically difficult to stream Smooth Moves. Yeah, but We Fit is on this list. Uh <laughs> we don't have a choice. <sighs> we have a choice. It's called Cancel Smashing Pieces. Uh <laughs> that's only if Bravely Default ends up on this list. Yeah. Uh so that's that's my argument is that I just think that WarioWare and like obviously we could decide to do a different WarioWare game if we wanted. We could do Gold though only you'd be able to stream that and I don't know if that's uh that would really be need a lot of talk behind it. We could do the original GameCube one which I, is that one good? Do people like that game? Uh, the GameCube one is actually just a remake of the original Game Boy Advance one. Okay, I figured that might have been the case. I never hear about the GameCube one, and that would explain why. But, yeah, so mine is WarioWare Smooth Moves slash maybe a different WarioWare game if we really decide that Smooth Moves is not tenable. And the third option that has been brought up to us multiple times by actually a couple of people Luke is just the only one that's tweeted at us publicly. But uh, Wario Land 2 is our third option, which would be the direct sequel to this game and the one that changed the... sort of changed the whole genre of the series and that's what the rest of Wario Land would become from there and the gimmick does sound very interesting. So, to reiterate, a poll will go up on Twitter... It will contain Wario Land Shake It, WarioWare Smooth Moves, and Wario Land 2. And you, dear listener... Me? Well, no, the listener. Get, get Move, move, get out of the way. I'm pointing to them. You, dear listener, will choose what game we play so that Wario is not stuck with this lackluster episode that we have sent out to you. God, I'm so sorry. Well, I just want to point out real quick, I went and checked the music list for the WarioWare stage, and there is one song that is not from WarioWare. Oh, right. There's a Shake It, lo there's a shake it yeah. song the in there, ruins. isn't there? <laughs> it's the ruins from Wario Land Shake It. I don't actually like that song. Uh, it's. I mean, I'm sure it's. it's not a bad composition. It's just not a good fit for a fighting game. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that's probably a big part of it. So let's improve this episode at least a little bit, marginally, by going ahead and moving on to our next game. And this one is not going to be a disappointment. I'm quite excited to play. I So let's let's just jump into it, I suppose. Our next game is representing fighter number 65, Ridley, released in 1994 for the Super Nintendo... It's Super Metroid. So there, there is a chance that you're going to come out of this and decide, you know what, this is not my kind of game. I don't think I like this. But I think it's highly unlikely that you're going to come out of this with the opinion that this is a bad game. This, this, I mean, this is Super Metroid. The entire genre is partially named after this game. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't really know. I have no frame of reference for this because, guess what, everybody? I've never touched Super Metroid. Never played. You never played. You never played, you never played any Metroid I've game. Never played any. Me well, technically, I've played one. You've never played any Metroid <laughs> game. For those not not aware of the joke, the only Metroid game I've played is Other M. You've uh, never played <laughs> any Metroid game, <laughs> and so pretty much I've never played. Any Metroid game, so like this, Zero Mission, Prime, Prime 2, those are all brand new territory for me. Yeah, not just those games, but the entire franchise. Pretty much. And 
I, I, again, I think it's very possible that you're going to come out of that and decide that Metroid's not your thing. And that's fine, but I, like, again, you'll be hard-pressed to make the decision that this is not a good game. Because it's it's incredible. And the only ways that I could say it doesn't hold up are, like, really, really nitpicky nitpicks. Like, literally, the, the specific controls. Uh, there's part of it that I don't like. Which I'll... It, it, it's just because I, I grew up with Zero Mission as my first Metroid game. I don't like that you have to toggle the missiles instead of hold. That's about it. <laughs> that is about it. I'd say in every other respect, this game is just as good now as it was in, what was it, 94? Uh, yes, 94. Yeah, uh, I would say this game is just as good now as it was when it released in 1994. Well, this and Symphony of the Night are included as, like, two of the greatest games in this genre that have ever been made still. Mm -hmm. Like, still to this day, those games are considered some of the greatest. And, like, I would argue that, that certain other games have sort of wriggled their way in. I think Hollow Knight basically deserves a spot in there now. Yes. But, like... Yeah, this is this is a genre that I don't really play all that often, which is weird because on paper this genre feels like it would work really well for me. The idea of like filling out a map, earning things to be able to go into other parts of the map to fill out more of the map. That sounds like me. That's something I would like. But I just haven't really like I just haven't had time to touch this game at all. And so I'm I'm actually really looking forward to playing this for the first time. And I know a lot of people are cautiously excited for me to play this game for the first time. So our friend Jesse, huge, huge fan of Metroid, Super Metroid especially, has a bingo board for your experience oh God. playing Super Metroid for the first time. <laughs> oh now no. obviously, obviously, I can't taint the results by spoiling anything on it. But I'm very interested in seeing, seeing how this turns out. Oh, boy. Uh, Jesse is personally putting more faith in you for one particular box than I think is warranted. Oh, no. Oh, God. I'm not good at video games, guys. 16 episodes, and you should know this by now. Well, technically, <laughs> technically only 15 where games have been played, but like 16 episodes of the show. Uh, for anyone, for anyone that's curious, I'm just gonna say the name of the room. It's not gonna tell you anything. Uh, it's it's the the bridge. Okay. Uh, so there's one thing all the way back in episode zero. We were talking about the wind condition for this game being save the animals, and you said you were going to have to explain this to me because I don't know what the fuck. I thought that was just a <laughs> GDQ joke. It kind of it was okay. It is a joke, and it's not a serious win condition, because it's very easy to miss and more complicated than is worth it to explain to you in detail without spoiling the game. Alrighty. Uh, but suffice it, it's, it's the difference between the good ending and the true ending, which is literally a difference of walking into a single room at a specific time, and it changes literally a couple pixels on the end screen. That's all. Huh. I, if you want to try to do this, we'll figure out some way, but it's very, very difficult to tell you what to do without spoiling. Alrighty. Well, I guess we'll find out together. Me and you, listener. You probably won't. You listening probably won't watch my stream. Maybe you should. You will. I don't you know. Should. Twitch.tv slash Detective Dobaga. This is probably going to be... This has the potential, I think, to be a two-parter, but I don't know. Because I might move through this slowly. <laughs> but who knows? Uh, I will try my best to not let it be a two-parter. Uh, if I feel like it doesn't need to be, then it probably won't be. How Long to Beat puts it at about seven and a half hours. And It's not a super long game. To, to put that in context... Our only multi-part game so far has been Link to the Past, which How Long to Beat put at about 15 and a half. So, 
not not to mention our next game is going to be at least three or four parts so it would be better for us to get through this in one episode i think that being said i don't have anything else to say about super metroid other than i mean i'm looking forward to seeing what all the hubbub is about i hear that samus is pretty cool and that she shoots a gun uh, greetings from Germany, long-time viewer, first-time donator. Uh, I've always loved uh, Super Metroid. I think it's a really good game. Uh, it puts towards saving the animals. So I'm, I will, I will pay you imaginary dollars. I will pay you an exposure to come onto my stream and every 15 minutes read out a donation <laughs> message. <laughs> That's the only thing I know about Super Metroid is GDQ messages. Crowd uh, we'll crowdfund our our our, our E three trip. <laughs> That's yeah. what we'll do. Do you want to pay for us to go to E three? Give us give us money. You can buy Super Metroid on Wii U Virtual Console, which is how I am assuming both of us will be playing it. No, you'll you have a SNES Classic. You could buy it on 3DS Virtual Console. You as could well. also, but I didn't pull that price up. Why do you gotta do this to me? Because it's also only on the new 3DS. But I didn't pull that price up. I pulled up the Wii U price so I could read off the Wii U price. It's eight dollars on the Wii U. I don't know how much it is on the new 3DS, but you can get know. it on that. I, yes, I I own it on that for some reason. And you will? I, I'm uh, assuming, well, not for some reason. It's the only way to play a portable. But. I'm assuming you will also be playing. Are you going to be playing on the SNES Classic or on the Wii U? Probably. I mean, I own it on Wii U, but I'm probably going to play it on the Classic because. Okay. I bought it. Might as well use it. Yeah. That, I mean, that's fair. So And also, yeah. more robust save state support on the Classic, surprisingly. That's true. You can also... You can also play, like, three minutes of it on the Brawl Masterpieces menu. Pretty sure Amiibo Tap also has it. No, Amiibo Tap was all NES games, wasn't it? Man, remember what the, what Amiibo the hell Tap? It, what? No, I don't. It was like a Wii. It's a Wii U app where, like, you tapped an amiibo and it gave you a random demo of a random, like, NES game. This sounds fake. No, this was real. It was weird. Uh, I, I don't know why I brought up Amiibo Tap. The point is, you can play Super Metroid on Amiibo Tap. I guess. I don't know. There are there are multiple ways you can buy this game. So go look into it. Give them your money. Support the official release. I don't got anything else to say. You can follow us on Twitter and on Facebook at Smasterpieces. You can also follow both of us separately. I am at the Debaga. Matt is at Grimace Do Menace. And yeah, go to Smasterpieces. That's our YouTube. AnonDino.squarespace.com. That's Anon as in Anonymous and Dino as in Dinosaur. AnonDino.squarespace.com. That's where you can find all of the episode posts, including a link to the spreadsheet that includes a list of every game that we are playing for this show. And as a reminder, check up on Twitter, because that's where I'm putting the poll to decide what game we play for Wario Land Echo Fighter. Yeah, that let's let's put a let's put a time uh, like this is like that poll will go up to X amount of hours after the episode airs. I don't know. That poll will go up at 5 p.m. EST on the day that this episode releases, which I cannot give you a concrete date. Uh, you, you can you can you can edit that in <laughs> right as you're finishing the episode. I'm far too lazy for that. It'll so if you've if you're listening to this episode right after release, five hours after. I mean, if you're listening to this like a week after, it's too late. Um. I don't think it's Twitter. I don't think Twitter polls can even last that long. It's never too late, and it will close exactly hmm, five days later. I think polls can go that long. Uh, it'll close either as long as a poll can go, or five days later. Yes, whichever comes first. So make sure you head to our Twitter again. That's at Masterpieces. Go vote for what game you want us to play so that Wario is not stuck with this tripe. <laughs> he makes too much money to be stuck with this liver and onions, god damn it. And with that, my name is Joe. 
And my name is Matt. And we will see you next time when we come back to talk about Super Metroid.